Hi, I'm Patu from Free Fincal. Today, let's take a question asked by Nanda. Can I avoid Nifty and invest 50% in Nifty Next 50 and 50% in debt? Now, uh, before we begin, if you have such questions to ask, you can uh, post them in the comments below or you can write to me and I'll try to make an article out of it and a video out of it. It should be a generic question that, uh, um, uh, that you think that many people would have. Uh, then it would uh, benefit everyone. Now, you might think uh, the answer is obvious. The answer uh, uh, is that you you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, remove Nifty from your portfolio because you think that uh, the Nifty Next 50 would do well in the long uh, long term and you don't mind the excess volatility and so on. Uh, you, uh, you can basically guess what I'm going to say and uh, it will be in agreement with, uh, uh, with what you think. But let's just go through the numbers to understand why we should not uh, uh, just like that avoid the nifty. Uh, so there are a couple of things here. Now the nifty 100 universe is supposed to be the large cap universe. That's the top 100 stocks by market capitalization. But if you actually notice something called the impact cost, um, the uh, uh, there, there's, there's a huge difference between the Nifty and the Nifty Next 50. And you would notice that there are only about a few stocks in India which are actually truly liquid. Now, impact cost means that if you take a stock and, uh, you know, buy just uh, like uh, five stocks or 10 stocks, something like that, you know, uh, you won't find a big difference between the, the buying price and the selling price. But if you want to move huge quantities of stocks like a mutual fund company would do, like a uh, like any uh, insurance company would do, or maybe government agency would do, LIC for example would do and so on, uh, then you would, for certain stocks, you would find that there is not much difference between the buying and uh, selling price, but for certain others, there'd be a huge difference. A measure of this difference between buying and selling price is known as impact cost and I've talked about this in previous videos the the minimum impact cost for the 50 stocks of nifty 50 September 2020 is 0.02 percent the maximum is 0.04 percent so all the 50 stocks of uh, nifty are within that 0.02 percent and 0.04 percent impact cost which is very good the median is 0.03 percent and the average is 0.029 percent so that's a very tight spread there's not di much difference between the median and the average which is a good thing so uh, if you go to the nifty next 50 the lowest impact cost is 0.03 percent so this means that uh, uh, only 11 stocks of nifty next 50 have a impact cost lower than the maximum impact cost of nifty next 50 so uh, if you take the stock with the maximum impact cost in nifty uh, in in nifty 50 only 11 stocks in nifty next 50 have a lower impact cost than that right so which means that basically uh, almost all the stocks in nifty next 50 have higher impact cost than the nifty 50 and there is one stock which has got 1.94% impact cost. That's just bizarre. That's an outlier. The median is 0.04% for uh, Nifty Next 50 and the average is very different from the median at 0.085%. So there's a big difference in the way uh, impact cost is distributed among the first 50 stocks of Nifty 100 and the next 50 stocks of Nifty 100. This is why I keep saying Nifty Next 50 is not really a large cap index. It is actually a mid cap like index. Uh, if you want to or, or rather if the fund manager wants to you know move uh, or buy and sell or sell large quantities of Nifty Next 50 stocks then they will have a difficulty in uh, you know there will be a huge there will be a tracking error because the impact cost means that there is a big, a big difference in buying and selling price. So uh, you can't uh, attribute this tracking error due to, uh, you know, because of corporate actions, because of dividends, because of expenses and so on. It, it is just coming from natural uh, supply and demand mismatch in the market. So this is the reason why you can have one of the reasons why I should say that Nifty Next 50 has got higher volatility than the uh, Nifty 50. Of course, higher volatility can work both ways. Now, uh, higher volatility can mean huge up movement, also 
huge up movement means huge down movement as well so that's not a big problem because we have seen earlier that uh, uh, there's something called volatility bunching so if i have a huge uh, up uh, upward movement it will be quickly followed by a huge downward movement and so on and so it will fluctuate on both sides almost equally not exactly equally but almost equally so that is not really the problem uh, with the with investing only in nifty next 50 if you take the last uh, few year returns so the last one year returns 5.95 percent for uh, nifty 2.7 for next 50 2 years 8.4% whereas 3.83% 3 years 6 6.8% minus 0.64% 4 years 8.92% um 4.39% 5 years 8.56 7.26 it is only in the 6th and the 7 years uh, that the nifty next 50 has outperformed the nifty 50 now the problem with us is that when we see a table like this we tend to think, okay, see, Nifty next 50, in spite of short term underperformance, in the long term of six years and seven years, it has outperformed. So therefore, I will invest in Nifty next 50 for the long term. This is a very, very wrong thing to do. See, uh, consider somebody who has invested in the Nifty next 50 uh, three years ago. Today, their return will be minus 0.64% uh, compared to 6.8% for the Nifty. Are you going to say, uh, in the next four years, that is seven years for that person, uh, already three years are gone. In the next four years, suddenly Nifty Next 50 will make up for all this and uh, outperform Nifty uh, uh, for that person. You can't say that. That is the reason why I keep saying sequence of returns is very, very important. You have this person has lost. So a person who has invested in Nifty Next 50 has lost three years, the, uh, four years are lost, five years are lost. So how, I mean, with respect to Nifty, that's what I'm saying. So uh, you can't simply say suddenly everything will become all right and it will correct overnight. So you cannot lose, um, you know, time like this by investing only in the Nifty Next 50. If Nanda had been a 20 year old, 22 year old, I would have said, okay, go ahead, invest only in the Nifty Next 50 for now learn about some volatility then you can diverse as you become older you can kind of uh, you know uh, add the nifty later on and so on but nanda is already 28 for the couch potato generation 30s is the middle age not the 40s because the couch potato generation is unlikely to live as long as the more active generations so for a couch potato generation uh, at 28 nanda is almost a middle-aged person uh, in terms of uh, you know, because of all lifestyle situations and so on. So, uh, so for an almost middle-aged person investing only in the Nifty Next 50, although he says his goal is 20 years away, uh, is too risky. Nanda says he will manage a 80% uh, crash. See, that's what everybody says before we see a crash. That's a different matter. But crash is not something we should worry too much about. It is the long, uh, you know, years of poor returns that will destroy a portfolio. You may be in a mental state, at least theoretically to withstand this three or four years of poor returns, but will your need be, will your portfolio be, will your future expense be? So that is the reason why you shouldn't just invest in Nifty Next 50, at least those who are above uh, 25, just investing in Nifty Next 50 is too risky. You will have to have the balance of the uh, Nifty 50 to kind of hold the portfolio together of course concentration risk and other that's another problem but uh, you need that uh, you need the stability of the nifty to hold that portfolio together so like i said if you have any questions like this please post them and i'll try to answer bye bye